Hi students, this is Dr. Jong. Let's analyze the spectrum. I have purposely hidden the molecule. So we're going to pretend like this is a practice problem. So consider the mass spectrum of an isomer of C6H13Br. Label the parent peak, the base peak, and assign uh, fragments, so there's an asthmus in there, to all major peaks above 50% relative abundance. Whenever you are given a chemical formula, save yourself some time and take out your periodic table um, and calculate the molecular weight. Right, so C6H13Br, that's 165 atomic mass units, right? Now, we're not gonna find a single molecule that weighs 165 atomic mass units because the values given by the periodic table are weighted averages. If we just have carbon and hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen in our formulas, um, and we're not looking beyond whole values, we're not looking at decimal points, um, then we don't even have to worry about the isotopic abundances. But remember, mass spec measures the exact mass. So when we have bromine or chlorine, those isotopic abundances do matter. Bromine exists as two isotopes, uh, bromine 79 and bromine 81, and their relative abundances are about 50-50, okay? So that's why we don't have any molecules that weigh 165. About 50% of them are gonna weigh 164 atomic mass units. And about 50% of them are going to weigh 166 atomic mass units. So if I look here, um, these are my parent peaks, and we get a characteristic M and M plus two pattern that's characteristic to organohalides. Okay. So any fragment that has bromine will also show an M and M plus two pattern. Line. So it's a mass and then, or a peak with a mass and then a peak that's two uh, Daltons higher, um, that's almost the same uh, relative abundance. They're not exactly the same, but they're about 50-50 for bromine. For chlorine, they're about 75-25%. They're actually like 76-24, um, but our y-axis is not that accurate, so it doesn't, we don't need to be that accurate. Okay, so here are my parent, this is the parent peak. You can call them the parent peaks, right? Because some of the molecules have bromine 79 and some of them have uh, bromine 81, so they have different masses. And then here's my base peak, which is the uh, tallest peak, okay? Now, um, assign fragment to all major peaks above 50%. Notice that the base peak doesn't have that M and M plus two pattern, neither does this peak at 85. So that means that this has no bromine, right? no bromine. Okay, and this has bromine because it has that peak, that pattern. Okay, so let's analyze um, starting from the highest um, weight, 135 and 137. So I'm simply just going to take 164, which is the mass of the parent, minus 135, okay, which is the fragment that has uh, bromine 79. Subtract them, and I actually get 79. So that is... Um, Oh, no, I don't get 79. <laughs> I get 29. <laughs> like, that's way too high. So that is loss of an ethyl fragment, loss of an ethyl, like a CH2CH3 loss. Okay. If I did the same with this 137, okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to write it up here. Uh, but now I'm going to use the M plus 2 weight, which is 166 minus 137, okay? Um, I also get 29. So that's redundant. You could ignore right, the 137 um, and the M plus two when just trying to draw the fragments and then just do 164 and 135, okay? So 
if I were to draw this fragment, actually, I don't know what the molecule is, right? Because I, I hid it away, but I know it's a molecule that can lose an ethyl fragment, okay? So it has to be at least long enough or large enough to have ethyl. Okay, now let me move on to 85. Um, so if I do 164 minus 85, okay, that is now 79, okay? So that's loss of bromine 79. So when we um, indicate the mass of an isotope, we put it as a superscript. Um, if I were to take the M plus two mass of 166 and subtract that 85, right? I mean, it's, you probably don't actually need to do that, but um, just to drive home the point here, uh, that this is loss of the isotope um, 80, bromine 81, okay. loss. E1PR. So that's why we lost the pattern because we have lost the halide. So now it's just a single peak. So this uh, peak here is leaving behind C, um, C6, H13. Right? The, or this peak is for C6, H, oh, one didn't show, A13. Oh, and if you wanted to actually label this peak like the problem set, so this would be um, C4, right, H, H8, and BR. Okay, and that's what these two peaks are. And of course, it depends on what isotope of uh, burning. The base peak, the tallest one, is 43. Now 43 is the mass um, of a propyl fragment. So this is CH3, CH2, CH2, okay? Um, and of course there's no bromine. I can do the same analysis, do 164 um, minus 43. Um, that gives me, um, the mass uh, remaining uh, with still the bromine, and I could subtract the bromine 79 and work backwards, but it is easier to memorize some common fragments, okay? Then instead of trying to guess what 164 minus 43 minus um, 79 uh, is for, okay? It would just be uh, for the remainder of the molecule. Okay, so at this point, I've analyzed all the fragments. The problem didn't actually ask me to propose the structure, but I can here. So the structure I propose needs to have a propyl, okay? Needs to have an ethyl, but of course, if it has a propyl, it's gonna have an ethyl, and it needs to fit this formula, okay? So I might propose, um, let me try it, yeah, over here, two, three, four, five, six, that's six carbons, and then bromine, okay? Right, because we can lose propyl, we can lose ethyl, and then we can lose the halide. Um, there's, of course, other isomers that would also fit. Right over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. There's of course other isomers that would also fix this fit. This is uh, one bromyl hexane, but two would also work. Um, and three would also work. Three bromyl hexane, okay? Okay, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.